video we are going to be covering is questing profitable within DeFi kingdoms. So we are going to be talking about questing and questing alone. Because DeFi kingdoms itself, if played properly, DeFi kingdoms is profitable. Now with that said, this video is not financial advice. Everything I say in here is strictly my opinion. So let's get into it. Okay, today's topic is a question I get re asked repeatedly. The question is, is questing profitable? Well, I believe questing is profitable. Now, the question you really need to ask yourself is what do you consider profitable? Because technically, a fraction of a penny of profit is considered profitable. Now, I'm assuming that's not what everybody's asking. If a fraction, if they're going to make a fraction of a penny, I think they're looking more for some kind of dollars. But I think Brown Gent put it the best, and I can't remember how he worded it, but it was something along the lines of, if you're only questing in this game, you're not going to be profitable. You're not going to really be profitable in the way you want to be profitable. Your profits are going to come more from summoning or not. Yeah. From summoning, selling heroes, flipping heroes. You know, there's so many ways in this game to become, to be profitable. Now, that's not the question we're asking today. The question we're asking today is questing and questing only profitable. Yes, I believe it is. And I think if you do all your questing and leveling and all that stuff today, in the future, that's where your profits are really going to show because you're going to have higher level heroes and all that stuff to be able to sell off to be profitable. But again, that's selling heroes, that's not questing. So we're gonna cover in this video what I've found as far as questing in the profits and questing alone. I'm not playing the game to be profitable by questing alone. My The reason I quest is to level heroes and get mats to do other things in the game. So, but let's cover the questing alone. So I have two wallets that I have not sent any money into for over a month. And I also have not been selling any heroes out of these wallets for that amount of time. So if you come in here, this is one of my wallets and we are currently on Serendale. Now, this is something you gotta think about when you're talking about questing for profits. So if you go in here to my heroes, I have, let's reset it and see what I got in here. I got 278 heroes. Out of those heroes, I've maxed out my mining and I have some also doing locked mining because I do have some locked jade on this account. So they're doing that to get me some, get that out of being locked up, which really isn't that that's not really earning anything. Let's just say that's probably a loss, but I just want to do it anyways, because I want to get the levels. But here between mining and gardening, in my opinion, that's going to be your most profitable because that's your highest drop rate for runes. Whoa, what happened there? 
Oh, I didn't click it. Gardening. <laughs> Oops. Damn it. I don't know how to use the filters. There we go. Gardening apply. I have whoop, I have got one too many miner or gardeners over here. Yes, I've maxed out my gardeners over here because I want those runes, because runes are very profitable. Now, I have not sold any of my runes on Serendale in this wallet. And I need to do that to get some more money. But that's all my gardeners over here. I have the max amount of gardeners because that's where I'm going to make the runes to make profit. Fishers. I don't have hardly any fishers over here. Forging. Now, I have a good amount of foragers over here. I got 173 foragers over here. Why do I have foragers over here? Because the swift thistle, if you go into my inventory, I haven't done anything with swift thistle for a long time, but I got 163 swift thistle in here. And is what I do is I just keep sending that over to my over to Crystal Vale to make potions with, which I haven't done for a long time. Once we get over there, I'll kind of explain that. But I have all these mats that I have not sold. I've been able to keep from having to put any more money into this wallet from selling tiers and tiers alone. See, I just sold off all my tiers. So now I no longer have any tiers in here, and that's what keeps my gas coverage. And then everything else is just a bonus over that. Now, with that said, a lot of people are not going to get enough tiers dropping to cover their cost in gas with just tiers alone anymore. Gas has gotten pretty high. So I do sell a lot of other stuff to keep that up. But if you look in here, I got 17 Mosca runes. You know, that's, what, maybe $20? I could sell those off to cover gas, and that would cover me for a long time. And I have not sold any of those off for a long time. Because what I usually do is I'll send them over to my other wallet, or I'll decide to start leveling some heroes up over 10. Because that's where your real value is going to come from when it comes to questing is having the right heroes to get those good drops. You know, if you have just a bunch of floor heroes that are not the right stats, all level one, just a big old mess of just whatever you can get for the cheapest value or cheapest off the market, I this is just a guess and a complete guess. I think you can still be profitable questing, just not really profitable in a way to where you could really count any value. The other thing that also I believe helps me when it comes to being profitable on questing is solely the amount of heroes I have. So let's think about that a little bit. If I only have, let's just say 10 heroes and I'm questing them the best I possibly can, and even if they're really good heroes, am I going to get enough tears and enough Mosca runes to cover my gas? I think if you play, play those heroes long enough, yes, you will. But will you get those drops before you run out of gas? That's the question. With having so many heroes in my account... I reduce, reduce that a lot because I will get those drops a lot more often and a lot more consistent than if I'm just waiting for a small amount of heroes to get me those drops. So we come over here to Crystal Vale. And here, I have, what do I have here? I have 452 heroes. My miners and my gardeners are maxed out because I want that rune drops as high as I can. Also in this wallet, most of my heroes are a much higher level. You know, I got, let's see, I got 452 heroes. How many of those are over level 10 or 10 or higher? 
175 of them are. You know, so I have a real, a much better chance of drops. I also have a lot of pets on this account, which I, I got to go through and get a bunch of signed. Not all of them are assigned. You know, I got 300 pets over here on just this one. And then on Ser or yeah, Serendale, I have a lot more pets over there too. Most of those pets are focused towards Runic Discovery and Gaia's Blessing or Gaia's what Chosen or whatever they're calling that. And that's to get me those tears and those rune drops. And that's how I maintain this wallet is between the rune drops and that. And here, I don't think I have any Mosca runes. I just sold them all off because on this wallet, I do sell them all off. By the way, all these crystals in here and a well, few stones, those were in here before I quit doing the sending money over here. So a lot of those were purchased, but at the same time, I'm not selling them either. But since I sold everything off this morning, I already got 318 tiers and one and one Moshka rune. So that's already going to get me a fair amount of funds to cover my gas. And then everything else would be profit. Now, it's not going to be a lot of profit, but it will be some profit. So, this wallet is kind of hard to say whether it's profitable or not, outside of the fact that I do get a lot of Mosca runes. But this wallet over here is just a little over a month old. When I started this wallet, I sent over 100 Joule and 1,000 tiers. And that's all I've sent over here so far. And the whole purpose of this wallet is just to see how often I can do summons with just my drops. Now, I didn't purchase any heroes in this wallet. All the heroes in this wallet was sent over from other wallets. So in here, I have 545 heroes. And they just do nothing but questing until I get enough money built up to where I can do some summons with them. Now, that has not been a whole lot of summons. I've only done... Oh, I don't know. Maybe four summons. You know, I'm I'm hoping to do at least one to two summons a week out of this wallet solely on the money that they that this wallet generates. So I just want to see how that plays out. But with that said, I'm able to cover all the gas and still be able to afford to do some summons. But those, again, those are not just crappy heroes. There are some crappy ones, but they're not just crappy heroes. And if you go in here and you look at my drops, you know, I got a Mushka rune in here. You know, I'm up to 2,400 tiers. So I'm gaining tiers and I'm gaining all these drops. And I've been able to keep selling off all the mats that I'm getting from questing to cover my summons. Now, I do, I haven't yet, but I will have to start selling off some tiers to cover some of those summons, I'm, I'm guessing, in the future. But let's think about that. I'm not trying to make money off of summons, or off of summons, off of questing. I'm trying to make enough off of questing to do a summon so I can get those heroes. Now, I'm not selling any heroes. I'll do that in the future. But if you think about it, let's just say you do that one summon off of what you've made from questing. And I managed to get, oh, let's just be crazy here, a Mythic Paladin. Well, now I can sell that Mythic Paladin for a pretty good profit. But we're talking about making a profit off of questing. Questing alone will be profitable, but very little. Now, summoning and selling the heroes, if you get a good drop, that will be profitable. That's a way to be profitable. So you got to really look at what your strategies are if you're in this game to be profitable. Now, all this 
being profitable off of questing is really RNG based. Because let's say you buy two heroes, you send them off questing in your very first quest, you get like two or three tiers and a Mosca rune. Well, now that's really profitable. Let's say you have that exact same scenario, you send them off questing and they get three bloaters and that's it. Well, that's not profitable. So you got to be willing if you're looking at questing and questing only to wait and play it out until you get those drops that are going to make you profitable. But in my opinion, if you're in this game to be profitable and to make money, you need to do a lot more than just quest. You need to build up heroes so you can do boar hunts, so you can get those equipment drops. Those equipment drops sell for a lot of money. You know, you can do build up some heroes, do some duels, get the equipment drops in there, get the other drops in there. You can make money on that. You can start doing summoning, make money on that. You can start flipping heroes, make money doing that. So that's all things you you need to really think about if you're trying to be profitable in this game. Now, I'm going to put it out there. I think if your whole goal in playing DeFi Kingdoms is making money, you really need to go subscribe to the Brown Gents channel and watch his videos. He has a lot of good topics he covers in there on how to be profitable. My channel's more based on gameplay, different strategies, and stuff like that. My whole goal right now is just building a legion of 10,000 heroes. It's not anything to do with I want to take $10 a profit a week in this game or any of that. But I do did want to share my opinions on is questing profitable and I think questing is profitable if you do it right, get the right heroes for questing and all that. So, with all that said, I'm going to leave it here and I believe your utmost goal in playing DeFi Kingdoms is to have fun. Thank you and have a good day.